Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. A day we've been looking up to. A day we've been preparing for. A day we're publicized. A day we've been expecting will come so that you'll do what you've never done in any life and every life. We're asking, oh Lord, that this will be the beginning of great fulfillment in every life in Jesus' name. For every member, for every leader, for every worker, for every pastor, for all our invitees, for everyone. We're praying, Lord, you will turn every life around in Jesus' name. I will pray that the promise of the kingdom, the power in the kingdom, the provision of the kingdom will be available for everyone, even from tonight in Jesus' name. You will not leave any stone unturned, any mountain not removed, any problem not solved, any heart not renewed. And you will bring everyone into the provision of the kingdom in Jesus' name. Bless everyone. The old, the young, the men, the women, all of us who are here and all who are hearing, Lord, we pray nobody will leave without a testimony. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Deep and Life Headquarters Church said, God bless you, you can sit down. Exodus chapter 19. I'm reading here from verses 5 and 6. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people of the earth. For all the earth is mine. Look at this in verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You can see there the original plan of God. He wanted everyone in Israel, everyone in that chosen nation to be heirs of the kingdom, the power in the kingdom. The purity in the kingdom, the goodness in the kingdom. He wanted everyone to inherit Psalm 145. In Psalm 145, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 145, reading from verse 9. The Lord is good to all. He'll be good to you this time. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Let there be no doubt in your heart. Let there be no doubt in your mind. He wants to do good in every life. And in your life in particular, you will carry miracles away. Verse 10, all thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. And thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. All the saints of God, all the children of God will be heirs of the kingdom and they'll be a testimony. They will speak of the glory of this kingdom and talk of thy power. You'll talk of his power. In your own life, you'll see that power. In your family, you'll see that power. And it says in verse 12, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. He say that all the saints of God, all the people of God, will bear testimony to the glory and the power, the majesty of his kingdom. Look at verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near unto all that call upon him. You will answer your prayer. You will call upon the Lord, whatever the need, spiritual or natural. 
salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost, baptism, or healing, or deliverance. It says the Lord is near unto all them that call upon him, and to all that call upon him in truth. Look at verse 19. It will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and shall save them. And shall save them. I come into Matthew chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 31. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Don't torment your mind. Don't wonder, will I have something? Will I not have something? You are going to have more than something. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith thou shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's your priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything you need is in the kingdom. Salvation comes through the kingdom. Holiness comes, it's in the kingdom. Healing comes, it's in the kingdom. Power comes, it's in the kingdom. Deliverance comes, it's in the kingdom. Security, it's in the kingdom. And therefore it says, make your pursuit the pursuit of the kingdom. Your priority, the priority of the kingdom. And what you are seeking after, eh? let it be the kingdom. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And how many things now? All these things shall be added unto you. A great addition is coming in your life. Heavenly addition is coming in your life. Unforgettable addition is coming in your life in Jesus' name. Whatever you have got, you will get more. Whatever you have, you are going to have more. Whatever you achieve, you are going to accomplish more. Because the Lord said, you seek Him. And you seek His kingdom. And He says, addition is coming upon your life. But you see where it starts? In John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. As we are seeking the kingdom, as we are heirs of the kingdom, as we are possessors of the kingdom, being born again is the very foundation. Look at verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We are coming to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. I read from verse 17, the kingdom. Heirs of the kingdom, possessors of the kingdom, those who inherit the kingdom. What kind of kingdom? Spiritual kingdom, a mighty kingdom, a powerful kingdom, a kingdom that supplies everything you need, everything you need for life and for heaven. We're coming to Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The major concern is the spiritual possession and spiritual provision of the kingdom. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The kingdom of God manifests power, and that power will be demonstrated in your life. 
Every plant the heavenly Father has not planted in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind, in your body, in your business, in your family, all those plants will be uprooted in Jesus' name. The power of the kingdom will work in your life. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, reading here from verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. You are delivered already. As the word comes to you, and you believe the word, and you accept the word, and you receive the word that they says for me, personally, you are going to find a fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. Any chain that binds you will be broken. All the fetters and all the cords of the enemy that binds you, even from tonight, they are broken and destroyed in Jesus' name. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You are a partaker. You are a possessor. The promises he has given, they assure us that God is going to give us everything we need, everything he has promised, everything heaven has for us. The Lord is going to bring upon every life in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 3, according as his divine power, not according to your natural strength, according to your natural limitation, according to your weak prayer, but according to his divine power, he has given unto us, how many things there? All things that pertain unto life, and godliness, and through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Shame will go out of your life. Sorrow will go out of your life. Human asleep defilement will go out of your life. Glory is coming upon your life. Virtue upon your life, whereby, verse 4, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Your Adamic nature will be replaced. Your natural self will be replaced. The nature of Satan will be crushed out. And the nature of the Almighty God Himself, as you enter the kingdom, will be parted into you in Jesus' name. It says that ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the, in the world through lust, and beside this giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness Charity, verse 8, for if these things be in you, they'll be in you, and abound, they will abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do the things, ye shall never fall. Ye shall never fall. Look at verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. Each of the, what kind of kingdom? Everlasting kingdom of our Lord 
and Savior Jesus Christ. You'll see the Lord that the Lord is preparing for us. And you'll see what He's calling us to. And tonight, we want to begin possessing a possession. Somebody there possessing my possession. Somebody there possesses of the kingdom. You will possess in Jesus' name. Tonight, kingdom provision. Kingdom provision. And there are three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, abundant provision for an heir of the kingdom. Abundant provision for an heir of the kingdom. What has God provided? What has Christ provided on the cross of Calvary? What's the Holy Ghost providing today? And shoving and putting into your heart, into your life today. How rich can you be? How great can you be? How full can you be? How filled can you be? Number one, abundant provision for an heir of the kingdom. Number two, the acknowledged priority of all heirs of the kingdom. The acknowledged priority of all heirs of the kingdom. If we're going to possess, what's the way? What's the path? What's the road? What's the route? What's the highway we take to become possessors of the provision of the kingdom? The acknowledged priority of all heirs of the kingdom. Number three, ascending prayers by awakened heirs of the kingdom. We are going to pray. I said we're going to pray. And every sin, every petition you present to God in prayer, the Lord is going to answer. Doesn't matter whether you've got an answer before or not, you are going to get an answer. Windows and the doors of heaven will be opened unto you. And a rain of miracles will be showered upon every life and every family in Jesus' name. Ascending prayers by awakened heirs of the kingdom. Number one, abundant provision. What are you going to have? I said, what are you going to have? What are you going to pray for? What is heaven going to shower upon your life? Abundant provision for an heir of the kingdom. Uh, can I plead with you that some of the verses we're going to read, obviously you have had them before, you have read them before, but can you act as if I never heard that? Can you act as if this is new? Can you act as if everything in these verses if they're going to be mine, and they will be yours. I said they will be yours. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, Look at the provision now, abundant provision. All disease shall be added unto you. Since you became a Christian, what have you desired? What have you been thinking? If I could have this, I have salvation already. If I could have this, I have sanctification already. If I could have this, I have the Holy Ghost baptism already. If I could have this, I have healing already. If I could have this, I have a job already. If I could have this, I have this privilege already. If I could have this, all those things you are thinking of. If I could have this, if I could have that, all these things shall be added unto you. Physical, all these things shall be added unto you. Spiritual, all these things shall be added unto you. In your family, all these things shall be added unto you. I lost my amen there. We're looking at Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, 
Again, look at this as if you never had this before. It says in Matthew chapter 21 verse 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, whenever he says verily, it says, there's no doubt about this. Satan cannot contradict this one. And whatever your past had been, your past cannot contradict that this one. And whatever you have been up to this point, it will not contradict this one. Something new is coming in your life. Something glorious is coming in your life. Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, when you pray, if ye have faith and doubt not, as you desire, if you have faith and doubt not, as you are thinking, if you have faith and doubt not, as you plunge deeper into the kingdom, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this, which is done unto the fig tree, but also, but also, if you shall say, Unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Can you say, it shall be done? What I'm asking for, it shall be done. What the pastor prays about for me, it shall be done. When I say my mountain is gone, it shall be done. When I say my mountains are taken away, it shall be done. When I say joblessness has gone away from me, it shall be done. When I desire a miracle, it shall be done. It shall be done. I said it shall be done. Jesus said it shall be done. Heaven says it shall be done. In your life, it shall be done. Verse 22, and all things, wonderful, and all things, and all things, and all things, whatsoever, ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Any recipient of the provision there, any possessor of the provision there, you will not leave this place tonight empty handed. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. We're reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9. We're reading from verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Remember this man? Maybe a man just like you. Maybe a man, spiritually your junior. Maybe a man that did know Christ like you know Christ. Maybe a man that was coming for the first time to Jesus Christ. A man overwhelmed by his problem. A man overwhelmed, overcome by his difficulty. A man that had the mixture of faith and unbelief. A man that was not sure. And Jesus said, this was not an apostle. And this was not a prophet. This was not even a worker. This was not even a member yet. He just came. There is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Any brother there? Any sister there? Any child there? Boy or girl there? There is hope for you tonight. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, Tell me now. Tell me out aloud. As you know, this is going to happen to you tonight. All things are possible to him that believes that demonic attack has come to an end. That perpetual, habitual sinning has come to an end. That arrow of the devil against your life has come to an end tonight. All things, all things, all things are possible to him that believe it. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, 
verse 13. And whatsoever, tonight is going to be a great night. And whatsoever, prayer time tonight is going to be the best time you ever had in the presence of the Lord. Because it says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask any sin in my name, I will do it. Why Paul does tears away, a new time has come. A new dispensation has come. He will do it in your life. I said he will do it in your life. Tonight is the night of entering into the kingdom. And tonight is the night of possessing the provision of the kingdom. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 28. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 28. It says in verse 28. It says over here. And we know. If you didn't know this before, you will know it tonight. If you have not uh, uh, been conscious of this before tonight, knowledge is coming to you. Personal knowledge is coming to you. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. All things that have happened in your life. All things that are happening in your life right now that you're confused about. Why is this? Why is this? Why is that? Tonight, darkness will turn to light. Tonight, all things will work together for good in your life in Jesus' name. To them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Jump down to verse 32. He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us, freely give us, freely give us all things? What are you going to pay before you have the all things? You don't have to, you know, walk on pebbles, punish yourself, you know, to shed tears, and cry, you don't have to beat yourself, you don't have to go into any penance. It says freely you are having it tonight. Freely you are having it tonight. How shall he not also a sin? Freely give us, freely give us all things. Look at First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written. I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. It says, you don't know yet the great things God is going to do tonight in your personal life and your family. It says, it has not entered into the heart of man. Neither has any man seen this before. The great things he has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us. Unto us. Unto me. Unto me. By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God is coming to pass. Third John, third John, only one chapter, chapter one, verse two. Third John, chapter one, and we're reading from verse two. It says, Beloved, this one is talking to me. Beloved, heaven loves you. This one is talking to you. God loves you. This one is talking about you. The Holy Ghost appreciates you. He's brought you in. This one is talking about you. Beloved, who is that? Beloved, I said, who is this? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. It is settled in heaven. 
and be in hell, it is settled forever. Even as thy soul prospers, it has come. I said it has come. Abundant provision for an heir of the kingdom. Point number two, the acknowledged priority of all heirs of the kingdom. Understand here, there's no exception. This is for everyone because it's the acknowledged we're having the priority of all heirs of the kingdom. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading from verse 33. But seek ye first priority. Seek ye first, there's the first seed. Seek ye first, there's a way to have everything the Lord has promised. Put him first, seek ye first, the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, then he says, and all these things shall be added unto you. God first. God first. Don't make the mistake of this man or these men I'm going to read about now in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 59. Luke chapter 9, verse 59. And he said to another, follow me. If you are putting God first, you just rise up and you follow him. Follow me. If you are putting first God, you leave darkness, you come to the light immediately. First, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Me first. Me first. No, that will not inherit the kingdom. Me first. That will not have salvation, me first. That will not have the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, me first. That will not bring the power of the Holy Ghost, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You make the kingdom of God first in your life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. A better amen. A more assuring amen. Verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. No problem. I'm going to follow you. I will repent. I'll turn away from my sin. I'll follow you. Even everywhere. I'll follow you into salvation, into sanctification, into Holy Ghost baptism, into service into ministry, eventually into paradise, into heaven. I will follow thee, but, but, let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home, at my house. Me first. That's the problem. Me first. That's the problem. Is the problem of self-centeredness. That's the problem. Is the problem of self-concentration. You are concentrating on yourself. Make the kingdom of God first, and heaven will come into your life. Verse 62, Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand on the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You'll be fit for the kingdom of God. I come to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. It says in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have some watch against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. You see, when we begin to put other things first, me first, my family first, my business first, my health first, my progress first, my prosperity first, my success first, my achievement first, and then after that I can think about God. He says, no, let God come first in your life. 
He's the creator. Let him come first. He's the one that so loved us and sent his only begotten son. Let him come first. He's the provider of our salvation. Let him come first. He's the one that has promised us all things. Let him come forth. If the one that is thinking so much about us every time, let him come forth. When we put other things forth beyond God, above God, it says he has something against us. God will be forced in your life. His kingdom will be forced in your life. It says in verse 5, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, repent and do the first works. The first was, let the main sin be the main sin. Let the first sin be the first sin. Let the creator be number one. Let a redeemer be number one. And bring him first to your life. And great things are going to happen in every life. No exception here tonight. Great things are going to happen in your life. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. We're looking at verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. The Lord is thinking about you. I said the Lord is thinking about you. He says thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end is going to give you something. I said it's going to give you something. All you need to do is make him number one in your life. Look at verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Whose prayer will be answered tonight? I said whose prayer will be answered tonight? Whose petition will be given tonight? It will give you your heart's desire. Verse 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. You shall search for me with all your heart. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 33. For seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, that is, you put his righteousness also as number one. Above healing, his righteousness. Above prosperity, his righteousness. Above marriage, his righteousness falls. Above having children, his righteousness falls. And the children will come. And the marriage will come. And the provision will come. And the miracles will come. The amen is door. I knew you could do that, and the Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Shall be added. Something extra is coming in my life today, shall be added. Something greater is coming upon your life today shall be added unto you. It will be done in Jesus' name. His righteousness first. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed a day that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It will fill you with righteousness. And every form of unrighteousness will pass out, will get out, will flow out of your system in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Reading from verse 23 and verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And be renewed. In the spirit of your mind, renewal is coming. And that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Righteousness and true holiness. 
and it's the righteousness of the bride. The righteousness of the saints of God. As you seek that first, as you put that first, as you place that as number one in your life, kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the other things are going to be added in your life. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and verse 8. Let us be glad and rejoice. There's room for joy tonight. I said there's space for joy tonight. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. You will be ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. He'll give that to you tonight as a gift. Righteousness will come upon your life. Holiness will be given to you as a gift. As you seek the kingdom of God, what you are not able to overcome before, you will overcome. And the challenges of your life in the past, spiritually, those challenges are solved tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, abundant provision. Number two, the acknowledged priority. Number three, ascending prayers by awakening the ears of the kingdom. Ascending prayers, your prayers will go up to heaven. Will reach the ears of God. And then as soon as your prayer reaches the ears of God tonight, immediately there will be no wasting of any time. Answers will come back. Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 8, verse 4. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. It says, as we're praying tonight, it will be like when the priests of old, when they were burning incense in the Old Testament, and then the smoke there, thereof ascending unto God. And your prayers will ascend and reach the ears of God tonight in Jesus' name. The only people that will not receive are the people that will not pray. But tonight, everyone that will pray, even if it's a single sentence, answer will come. With your heart, your prayer ascending to God, answers will come tonight. Salvation is coming tonight. Sanctification is coming tonight. Healing is coming tonight. Deliverance is coming tonight. Holy Ghost power is coming tonight. Provision is coming tonight. Miracle children are coming tonight. Deliverance coming tonight. The only people that will not receive are the people that will just close their mouth and then they keep quiet and they will not say anything. But I'm talking to people who are going to say something. The redeemed of the Lord will pray. The people of God will pray. Answers will come in Jesus' name. James chapter 4 verses 2 and 3. James chapter 4 verses 2 and 3. Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, tell me, ye have not, tell me the rest. That's uh, James chapter 4 verse, which verse? I said which verse? Tell your neighbor the verse, verse 2. We're going to, I'm still going to ask you to read that last part. Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war. Ye have not, tell me now, ye have not, tell me out aloud, because ye ask not. 
I want you to look at that last part very well. Ye have not because ye ask not. If you remove the not in the first part and the not in the second part, because I believe every negative sign is coming out of your life tonight. Negative sign, not taken away. The next negative sign, not taken away. Your life will be positive. Your life will be practical. Your life will be powerful. It says, now take up the knot. Say, I take up the knot. Say, I take up every negative thing. Now, ye have because ye ask. Ye have because ye ask. Somebody there, ye have because ye ask. You are going to have in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. We're reading from verse 5. Luke chapter 11. Reading from verse 5. Here are the words of Jesus. It says in verse 5, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? I shall go unto him at midnight. I shall say unto him, Friend, let me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. He will rise and give you as much as you need. Tonight, he will rise and give you as much as you need. And I say unto you, who is this you? And I say unto you, I said, who is this you? For the first time, your prayer will have an unprecedented miracle. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Are you ready for verse 10? For everyone, how many people? Somebody there, the Lord is going to answer your prayer. Where are you there? I say, where are you there? Answers are coming tonight. Salvation has come tonight. Holiness has come tonight. The power of the Holy Ghost has come tonight. And healing has come tonight. Deliverance has come tonight. Joy will replace your sadness. Happiness will replace all negative things in your life in Jesus' name. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, and to him that knocketh, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone? Answer me. If he ask him a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? And if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Ah, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? How much more? How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Give me a good amen. 
your time has come to receive. I said your time has come to receive. Blessings are coming upon your life. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Reading from verse 20. Now unto him that is able, our God tonight is able. That mountain is able to remove it. Mountain of sin, of guilt, of condemnation, of eternal punishment is going tonight. Mountain of sickness is going tonight. Mountain of bondage is going tonight. Mountain of infirmity is going tonight. The mountain of impossibility in your life is going tonight. Mountain of living from hand to mouth is going tonight. Mountain of sorrow is going tonight. Disaster is going away tonight. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that walketh in us. Where's, going, where's the power going to walk tonight? Inside your soul, inside your spirit, inside your brain, inside your body, inside your life, inside your family, the power that worketh in us. Now unto him that is able. Anything you are asking tonight to understand, your God is able. That is able to do, he will do something. He will work out something. It will transform your life. It will transform that situation. He's able to do what we ask. I said he's able to do what we ask. He's able to do all that we ask. Somebody there, all that you ask. All that you ask. He's doing it in Jesus' name. He's able to do Above all that you ask tonight. Above everything you're asking tonight, it will give you everything you ask, it will add something to it. Then it's able to do abundantly above all that you ask. In fact, look at it. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or see. Then he said, according to, according to tell me, according to tell me the power that worketh in us. Power is coming from heaven. Power is coming from his throne. And it's coming right into you there. And is going to do something you have never had before. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Your time has come. My time has come. It's time for action. It's time for asking. It's time for prayer. It's time for the windows of heaven to open. It's time for miracle. It's time for salvation. It's time for sanctification. It's time for Holy Ghost power. It's time for healing. It's time for deliverance. For seeking for seeking for seeking for the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And thank God in your life, where are you? I'm looking for them. I said in your life, where are you? It says, all these things, all these things, all these things, all these things shall be added unto you. Stand up for your addition. Stand up for your multiplication. Stand up for the power of God coming upon your life tonight. Remember, we're heirs of the kingdom. 
Remember, we are heirs of the kingdom. Sorrow will go. Suffering will go. All the guilt of sin will go. Enter into the kingdom. Enter into the kingdom. Say, Lord, I come. He said he will open the door when you knock at the door. He's opening the door right now. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Only the people who do not pray will not have an answer. You are having an answer because you are praying. You are having salvation because you are praying. You are having sanctification because you are praying. You are having healing because you are praying. You are having deliverance because you are praying. You are having miracle because you are praying. You are receiving right now. Nobody is going away from here empty handed tonight. You are receiving right now. Nobody is leaving that place tonight empty handed. You are receiving right now. Ask, it shall be given you. Salvation, Lord. Salvation, Lord. Forgiveness, Lord. Freedom, Lord. Grace, Lord. Redemption, Lord. He's giving it right now. He's answering your prayer. He will answer everyone. He will answer everyone. He will answer everyone. Take my guilt away. He has answered. Take my body away. He has answered. Take my confusion away. He has answered. Take the punishment away from of sin from me. He has answered. Take all these consequences of sin away from me. He has answered. Only those who do not pray will not receive. Everyone that prays will receive. You will receive. You are receiving right now. Change my heart. He has answered. Make me holy. He has answered. Sanctify me. He has answered. Make me a possessor of the kingdom. He has answered. Remove this mountain. He has answered. Only those who do not pray will not receive. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Heal my body. He has answered. Take this deformity away. He has answered. Break my yoke. He has answered. Set me free. He has answered. Deliver me from all my enemies. He has answered. Let the power of the Holy Ghost in a mighty torrent enter into my body. He has answered. Give me some addition. He has answered. Add some miracle. He has answered. Add deliverance. He has answered. Meet all the needs of my life. He has answered. Ask, it shall be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, it's opened unto you already. You are the beloved of the Lord. You are the favorite of the Lord. He may wait to hear from you. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Every need of your life will be supplied. Every body in your soul be lifted up. Every mountain of your life is going to take away. Every sorrow is going to take away. Your desire for yourself and such. Desire for your wife and such. Desire for your husband and such. Desire for that child of yours, it's and such. Desire for mommy or daddy, it's and such. Desire for your daughter, it's and such. Desire for your son, it's and such. 
Desire for your brother, for your sister, it's answered. Desire for your personal life, it's answered. For your ministry and service in Christ, it is answered. Your desire for your business, for your job, for your profession, answered. Desire for power in your life, answered. Every prayer you pray will be answered tonight. You see the touch of God in your life tonight. You see that miracle life, miracle power in your life tonight. Pardon, peace, purity, provision, power, abundance, all yours tonight. All yours tonight. Save me, Lord. He has answered. He has answered. Believe. Receive. Retain. You'll keep the blessing of God. You will not lose it anymore. You are favorite of heaven. You are the beloved of the Lord. Answered, I am answered. Blessed, I am blessed. Transformed, I am transformed. Energized, I am energized and empowered. I am different now. Something has happened. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and assuredly, without any shadow of doubt, all these things shall be added unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Favorites of heaven, beloved of God, in Jesus' name we pray. He has answered my prayer. Say, He has answered my prayer. I am no more empty. I am no more empty. I am no more graceless. I am no more powerless. I have. I have. I have, because I ask, I am a possessor, I am a partaker of the blessings of the kingdom. Amen. Raise up those signs with joy, with assurance, Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name because the windows of heaven are opened. We well, thank you because everyone that has asked, you have answered them. Those who have asked for salvation, you have given them salvation. Those who have asked for holiness, you have given them holiness. Those who have asked for your power, you have given them power. Those who have asked for healing, you have given them healing. Those who have demanded deliverance, you have given them deliverance. Those who have asked for total redemption, you have given them total redemption. Those who have asked her to wipe their tears away, you have wiped their tears away. Those who have asked for their families, you have blessed their families. Those who have asked for addition, multiplication, or blessings upon their lives, you have added unto them. You have multiplied blessings unto them. And those who have asked to be made strong in weakness, you have taken their weakness away. You have empowered your people. 
You have done something in every life. You have blessed everyone. I will pray, Lord, what you have done is just a beginning. You are going to fill your people to overflowing in Jesus' name. Power from on high. Provision from on high. Miracle from on high. Deliverance from on high. Abundance from on high. Joy from on high. You grind to everyone in Jesus' name. No member of the body of Christ here will remain weak, will remain sinful, will remain powerless. Lord, I pray the divine nature will come into everyone in Jesus' name. Those who were weak in the past, now you are strong. Let the weak say, you are strong in Jesus' name. Let the sick say, you are healed, you are made whole in Jesus' name. Let the oppressed say, you are delivered in Jesus' name. You will not be a slave to Satan. You will not be a slave to sickness. You will not be a slave to sin. Dominion in your life. Power in your life. As a beloved of God, from now on, you are more than a conqueror. Greater, greater, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You will retain this victory in your life in Jesus' name. Move on from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from power to power, from possession to prosperity, from weakness to strength. You are blessed, remain blessed in Jesus' name. You keep on enjoying your miracle. Lord, confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.